I think so. Yeah. But I can pause the recording. Welcome everyone to our July 2023 monthly workshop for uh, digital, men digital mentors uh, team members. We, our goal is to do this, to try and do this every month to help our team continue to improve in our understanding of digital, improve our skills, and uh, to share what we know. Uh, we may or may not do an event in August, given uh, how uh, slow it can be for many of us. But otherwise, uh, starting in September, we'll definitely uh, aim to be every month. And Linda, our VP of training, is looking for ideas, speakers, et cetera. We pay very nominal honorarium, as Liam knows, but we will give you unlimited fame within Digimenter. So um, if, if you know anyone who should be presenting or if you have an idea you'd like to present, just get in touch with me and Linda or just Linda, and uh, she would love to hear ideas. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be tools, as you know. Um, uh, we're, we're open to almost any idea. Uh, great to see all of you here. This is being recorded so that uh, others can catch up later. Uh, we, as we, as I was thinking about the topics and what are the things we want to use, a lot of the stuff we're going to be focused on are things we all will be using directly. So you remember our early sessions on Canva and how to use Canva better, or Neil doing sessions on how to set up your Chrome profiles, things that are practical things that you will use every day. When it comes to the topic of Figma, it may be something that many of us never use, but it's something that's so big and important in the world that we're in and around that it's important that we understand what it does, its capabilities, its shortcomings, where it is like Canva, where it's not like Canva, and uh, so that this for our own edification and knowledge, but also for our clients. As digital mentors, we have to be able to, when someone says, what do you think of Figma, at least have a coherent sentence that we can say uh, in response, or if they ask if we should be considering it for working with them, we should have some kind of way of thinking about it. So uh, in order, so I was looking for the right person to be able to do that for us when I came across Liam Tracy. And Liam is uh, someone who was introduced to me uh, as a, a designer, an artist, and someone who does a lot of creative and artistic director work at major brands, as you've seen off his resume. He's worked with uh, na name brands you know, including Peloton uh, and, uh, and uh, Rock Nation, uh, Shark Ninja. Uh, and you can see examples of his work at liamtracy.com. I hope you'll also all uh, connect with him on LinkedIn. And if he has any other socials he wants to share, he will share those with you as well. Uh, you, you may notice his last name is similar to someone who has joined us late, recently herself, and that's Ryan Tracy, Ryan with two N's, and Ryan and Liam are brother and sister. And uh, we are uh, grateful to have them in our circle. And Liam, in addition to doing this workshop, uh, will be available when our clients need design help. As you know, Shristi, our creative director and art director, is busy running her own agency now. I mean, running her own team within a big agency. So she doesn't have as much time. So that's why we brought Liam to help us uh, in this very important role within uh, Digimentor. So with that, I'm going to put the spotlight on Liam. And he has the floor. And he's going to present for... 20, 30 minutes, take questions. And along the way, if you have questions, you can also ask them on the side. I told him to make this uh, Figma 101, Figma for folks who aren't designers themselves, and to constantly think about how to make this as practical a session as possible. So with that, please welcome Liam Tracy. Thank you, everyone. Um, I shared all of my social via the chat so i have um my linkedin portfolio some of my art i also post a lot of my art on um instagram as well which i can also share the people are on there um does anyone is anyone familiar with figma 
Besides, yeah, well, I know Marilyn Williams, but anyone else ish? I see Neil, just Tanya, a little, Alina, a little bit. Cool, that's good. So, three people. <laughs> and does everyone use Canva here? Uh, I use Canva. Okay, cool, great. So that's pretty much everybody. So, in can regards, just, Liam, can I just say that? Yeah, years ago or four years ago, that answer would have been very few people. It would have been three right. new people. Now everybody knows Kemba, so that's that's the right. 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 Team. What's right. funny is it's like the opposite for me because I I've used Cam. I've like looked at Canva maybe once or twice, and I've never actually used it because it's in regards to like as a it's kind of like in regards to a designer graphic designer, art director, anything that's kind of would be like an insult to use it just because it'd be like so dummy down and be like, that's what you're using for this design. I'm saying it's a great tool because it's so user-friendly, but in regards to like, actually, if you're in the, in the field, it's not like a good look, I would say. Um, but in regards to just anyone using it on a daily, it's, it's a great tool and it's a powerful tool. Um, yes. So I became familiar with Figma. I'm just going to give you guys a little recap of like why and how I know Figma. Figma came out in 2015. I became familiar with it when I was designing for Lincoln Auto. So I was doing all the digital. There was a team of three of us doing all the user experience and user interface and building the e-commerce for Lincoln Auto. Does anyone own a Lincoln car? Anybody out there? No. Okay. Or or a Ford car. Someone's got to have a Ford. <laughs> but <laughs> so, Lincoln Lincoln was trying to reinvent themselves to the youth market around that time. Yes, and I was involved in that. Yes. That okay. Was, yeah, I I remember that. Yes. So the agency that I worked at focused primarily on exactly what you're talking about and. We came up with the Matthew McConaughey commercials. So those like ones of him driving and waiting for the train passing. And he's like, I think he's like playing with a coin or something. And then I remember Jim Carrey goofed on him and it was like a huge hit, maybe on SNL or something like that. But and we also got Beck involved and um Beck the musician and uh, a couple other great initiatives that we had going on there. The reason why Figma came up is because we were redesigned. I was on the digital team and we were designing a lot of the Lincoln website. Someone have a question? No, okay, good. Uh, when we were designing, redesigning the website, we had a freelancer come in who was building a UI kit. A UI kit is a user experience kit for basically the new e-commerce. So we were trying to build our e-commerce because people love, love um, the designing Steve, I see your comment on here. I want to see what you're saying here. You could speak also, Steve. It's fine. Uh, they can afford a lot more than you. Oh. <laughs> so no, three, three was saying, how can they afford Lincolns? I said they can afford a lot more than we used to or have more debt, period. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, or so do you take crypto? <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt that. <laughs> Especially now. So... We were redesigning the UI kit for their e-com. UI is a user interface kit, which is basically like how the buttons look, how um, the icons look within the website. So within the e-commerce website. Funny enough, that is when COVID happened. So 2020, that was like just previous to COVID. It was probably the beginning, December, January, February, then March COVID went on we had this the reason why this sticks in my mind is we had this freelancer who was just using figma and at the time i didn't know what it was and he was really trying to push us to use it and not that we were fighting on it, it was just like oh we're in photoshop we're in illustrator we're in indesign which is all adobe programs and so we were kind of like uh, you can use that but we don't want to use that now covid launches off we're all at home. We're all stuck at home. We're all sent sharing files as digital designers. Oh, is that the final design? Is that is that the right one? Oh, it's missing certain links, right? I don't know if anyone uses Photoshop here, or Illustrator, or any of the Adobe programs, but you have to make sure everything is linked all the time. 
If it's not linked, you can miss an image, fonts, for instance, if you don't have the correct fonts. So now you're working remote for the first time ever in the, in the history of our world, right? Like everyone's forced to work at home. And now you're having these huge issues. Files are too big, right? You have WeTransfer, you have Dropbox. The organization becomes a nightmare because you have all these files and you're like, how do I structure? Is this the right one? Oh, this was yesterday. Is this the correct one? Last time this was updated, it was last week. Did that designer not update the correct one because now they're working off of their desktop at home? So communication becomes a huge issue and, and a main concern. Now Figma comes into play. Figma, are there credentials for Figma? No, anyone can download Figma. Um, you always see your question. Um, so now Figma comes into play. It's a complete cloud-based design program. So now you do- I couldn't find clouded in your Apple Music library. You can ask me to play your- all right, <laughs> no worries. Um, so it's complete cloud-based. So you don't need to share files, fonts, images, um, whatever, hex code of colors, everything is in there. And now it not only reaches to the designers, but it also reaches to all the developers. And so like, if I'm a developer and an engineer, right? And I need to know the size of, um, a button, a call to action CTA, it's right on there. You can, it says the inspection on it. You can click it. You don't have to share it. In Photoshop, you just have to slice these. So like if you had, let's say a web page laid out of the Lincoln website, you'd have to take every element, element, cut it out and share it with the developer. It cut out so much time because the developer and the engineer could just grab it from Figma. And now everyone's working at the same time. So you have, you can also see um, Google Docs, right? Or Google, or Google, uh, yeah, Google Docs is a good example. If we're all in Google Docs right now, I can see Shri, I can see Rob, I can see Marilyn all updating, right? In Google Docs, and it says like Marilyn's in here, Steve's in there, Shri's in here. And it shows your little like blinker icon, right? That's the same way Figma works. So Figma, I could see everyone's cursor or mouse. So if we're all in there, I can see live real time, Shri grabbing an element and moving that element around. So let's say my mouse would be blue, um, Shri's would be uh, yellow, um, Linda's would be orange. It would just be a mix of, of everything and nothing gets lost. So now when COVID happens, this becomes like a, Game changer because everyone's home. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and you guys are going to now understand more of what I'm talking about. So, can everyone see my screen? Thumbs up. Yes, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So, I designed this in Figma. You don't like, I just, I wanted to share or basically create this presentation in Figma so you guys could all see the UI, how, it, how the layout is, right? So, you guys see my screen. You have certain frames, and I'm going to show this in a couple seconds, but you have the frames, right? So you can see where your frame is. It's right here. I can see what is Figma. I can change that. So if Shri's in here right now as well, I can see his mouse moving. I can share it right here. Actually, Shri, I did share it with you, but you don't have Figma, but you're on there if you do actually want to look at it at some point. So this is the UI, which is the user interface of it. It's very simple. It almost looks like a PowerPoint vibe to me, you know, like the way it's laid out, kind of a mix of PowerPoint, Illustrator, Photoshop, kind of all combined, trying to keep the user face as friendly as possible because you're entering a market that's completely, extremely competitive, right? You're like competing with Adobe. So it's a difficult space to get into. And designers, are very picky and they're in, you know, when you're using a program for 15, 20 years, you don't want to have to use something new when you have the huge background of, of a certain program and you have your certain flow of work. So here's an introduction video that I will show of what Figma is. It's really pretty. This is what they designed, even in regards to their branding um, and layout and typography is very like, it's very nice. Um, can you guys see this as well? Awesome, great. Can you hear it? 
We know that good design is more than how something looks. It makes people feel. It makes people act. It makes a good product great. But for all the good design out there, the design process is often a mess. Files are passed back and forth, endless final versions are saved, and nobody ever has the right phones. At Figma, we thought the design process needed a redesign, and so that's what we did. Figma is a platform where teams design together. It unites everyone in your creative process. Bring that idea to life in a design, wireframe, or prototype. Figma does it all in the cloud. Let your writer do their word magic right in your design file. Figma lets you both get on the same page, literally. Partner with your developer early and often, even if they live on the other side of the globe. Figma makes handoff more like a handshake. Invite your stakeholders to give feedback and note comments right in your work. Figma helps you get what you need and helps others get what they need. And all of this, you can do together in real time without stepping on each other's toes. It's time to design on your terms with Figma. All right. Any questions? Yeah, I'm sending one over. What's that? I just sent one over. How are changes orientated on the dashboard? Uh, so the final design uh, is there, even though you have multiple users, like if you have multiple users, how do you get to that final design? Does it just keep changing? Like, That's how does that question. work? That's a great question. So I'll go to the next slide as an example. So this is in Figma, right? And right. I'm working with, with you on this, on this board right here, frame 20. And I change this, it's going to change real time. The idea would be, I can do this, have my own board. Oh, wow. say, oh, I don't want this to say design. I want it to say um, buy. I don't know. I'm just making something up. And I want it to be blue. Uh, well, blue is a terrible color because you can't see it, but pink, let's say. <laughs> right. So now I'm like, oh, this is Liam's design for Shree's design or Ryan's design, let's say, whoever it may be. And this is this is where we ended up yesterday. But now this is today. Oh, I do like this pink. You know, maybe we can build it from here. So everyone's working. You could also create a new file. You know, let's say you just mm -hmm. want to create a new board. You create a whole new board and then implement it in and kind of just say, like, you can name the frame, let's say, uh, test. Just as an example, mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, this was the test that was designed yesterday or this morning. You know, this is a concept and you can have unlimited of these. It can be, I don't know if you wanted a thousand, I mean, a thousand would be overkill, but you could have 20 or 30 or a hundred. Right. Um, yeah. Good question though. Um, yeah. As yeah. Any, any other questions for the video? No, you guys are good. Okay, cool. So Figma uses cloud-based engineering to design wireframe prot prototypes. So like it said, all the engineers can use it, designers, um, it's, it's very universal. Uh, like I said, all Google Docs, all assets, fonts, and images live on the Figma cloud. All designers, engineers, developers work in one single shared master file. Um, Creative tools meet the internet. In 2011, a light bulb went off. Could tools for designers be built on the web? We knew that if we could pull it off, this is coming from Figma, right? More people from more places could have access to powerful design tools. And again, here's the mouse situation, right? So like everything's color coded as you saw in that video. Anyone in the world could work could finally work together in the same design file. So it's a, it's a game changer in regards to that. Like nothing like that has ever existed before in the realm of design. You could do it in Google Slides, but it's not, it's not as intuitive, right? It's not a design platform. Um, 
especially when Figma came out, mobile app design started to really ramp up. And mobile Figma was very keen and very strong in the mobile app world because now you can get en engineers and the prototyping to actually see what's going on live time, as I was saying, and build out the mobile app, mobile app, um, desktop, tablet world. And, you know, like the mobile app world was exploding around the time that this was launched. And I mean, it still is a huge force, but at that point it was like everyone was racing to the top for mobile apps. Uh, and questions like, where's the final version would be a thing of the past, which in this regard, it is and can be. In 2015, the first design tool that combined accessibilities, accessibility of the web with the functionality of a native app was born. And Figma made it free for anyone to get started. Again, I made this. I can change anything I want. If Ryan or Shri came in here, I could also change this to uh, duh and change it. Um, and I would see it happen in real time. This was one of the first products. This is the original UI here. So similar to what they had, this was actually a screenshot I grabbed that I found online, which is similar to what they have on this side navigation. Um, just, you know, obviously enhanced because it's a while ago. Um, not everyone was optimistic as Figma was on the concept, right? So like, like I'm saying, even when I was at Lincoln, people were like, I don't know if I want to change what I have to use. Um, because we were people get in their comfort zones and they get so used to doing what they regularly do and they get strong at a certain tool. Um, in regards to COVID, like I keep repeating, and I, I can't stress that enough, it really jump-started this business uh, big time. So you see the comments here. It's, if there was a future in design, I'm changing my careers. That's what someone had to say in the beginning of the prototypes, which is like, it's funny. And I'm sure that person is still a designer using Figma now, <laughs> unless they actually change their careers, I doubt it. Um, cool idea, but it seems not practical. I mean, you guys can read these comments as well, but uh, it was interesting to see any time a tool comes into play in, a, in, a, in any type of new space, people get scared and there's questions and concerns. Uh, but once designers started working together in Figma, real-time collaboration didn't seem so scary after all. Teams welcome more people into the design process, workflow sped up and got a lot more fun. And Figma became a home for working together beyond company walls, right? So like we could all high five if we wanted to, if the five of us were working on a project, we could all be like, oh, good job today. You know, it, it's, it's also in a remote sense and in a remote world or a hybrid world. It's nice because you could see what people are doing. Not to, so you can see like what progress they're making, where they're at and, and like kind of chat with them and be like, oh, hey, I see you working on this. And it, it starts a dialogue, right? So not everyone's working in a silo and silos can be scary and not, as you guys know, it's not the best place to be at because you're not communicating with your coworkers. Uh, now companies from all over the world are redesigning the way they design. Um, I mean, this is just comments from Airbnb, Condé Nast, GitHub, and Figma looks forward to future where design is even more collaborative, borderless, transparent, community driven, and open sourced. Um, and I'll go in a bit. I'll, so many companies now are using Figma. It's it's wild. Um, Figma's mission: making design accessible to everyone. So anyone here can download Figma free and use it for free. You could download it after this call and just play around, have fun, make some shapes, type some things out. Um, go wild, just open it and get scared and be like, this isn't for me, it's freaking me out, but, but it's free and you can do it. <laughs> There's a pro platform that's another level um, that none of, and no one here would need, but you could definitely get in there and play around and just get some kind of, you know, just to relate and see what's going on. And it's a powerful tool. You don't know where it's going to go if you're going to work with someone in the future who's using it. Um, there's again, their slogan is the best way to design is together. Makes sense to me. So now they created a thing. I mean, they have a lot of kind of tangents and spring offs as the concept of what Figma is and can do. 
they started this uh, program called Fig Jam. I think it's a great name. I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> and so like, I, it just reminds me of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it's delicious and it's very friendly, the name. And I think it's a very good branding spinoff. Um, it's a cloud-based whiteboard brainstorming. So as opposed to getting deep in the design, now it's pre-designed kind of just splashing up as you would in an office, but now you're doing the digital cloud-based platform where you're kind of just spitballing ideas. There's no wrong questions, wrong ideas. You're, there's icons, it's colorful. There's sticky sticky tabs that you have on. There's You can throw in emojis, you can throw in lettering, you can throw in colors, you can throw in shapes. It's kind of like a free-for-all. Um, I can show you guys this as well. But this is Fig Jam, the online whiteboard where teams can ideate and collaborate on everything from discovery to design sprints. I'm a product manager at Fig Lunch, a delivery app from Hong Kong. We are using feedback from our users and research team to brainstorm and prioritize our roadmap as we expand into new markets. I'll create a Fig Jam file to organize our thoughts. I can click the new file button on here or type bigjam.new into the address bar. To prep the board, I'm using shapes to create title cards for designated feedback areas. I'm also going to adjust the colors and text size in these shapes to make them pop. Next, I'll drag some stickies to the board to add some ideas and get things going. I'm using the marker tool to create an effort and impact matrix. If I hold down shift, I can draw a perfectly straight line. Sweet. Now I'll add a text box to label each axis. I'll add the gems agenda stickers from the library to give everyone the rundown. Hmm. Great. Now it's time to share the file with everyone involved. Looks like the gang is all here and you say high fives and curse the chat to say hi. Big Jam has all the tools we need to run the meeting. Let's start an audio conversation. Wow. All right, everyone, click my avatar to follow me on the board and I'll give you all the rundown of what we are doing. During the sections, We'll dedicate some time to add our learnings and customer feedback under the designated section. Next, we'll discuss, organize, and prioritize tasks. I'm putting 15 minutes on the timer to keep these sections on track. Let's go. We've heard the search bar is hard to find because of the low contrast. We can increase the contrast of the field to increase visibility. Ooh, that's a great call. Let me grab the current design from our file and paste it here. Is this what we're talking about? Bingo. The research team is always hearing that people want a way to quickly reorder their past meals. We could also add the ability to create a favorites list. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, we could add filters for diet preferences, like vegans or halal. I'm pasting the screenshot from a review site that I love. That was great. And look at all these feedback. Let's put another 15 minutes on the timer and use stems to vote for our favorite ideas. I love this idea, Fifi. We hear this all the time at focus groups. Raji and I have wanted this feature for so long. Let's make it happen. We hear this a lot in support. 
Customers would love if we added this feature. Thank you, everyone. Time to prioritize. I'm going to select the top ideas, duplicate the stickies, and bring them to the matrix. Let's study these a touch and time box this portion. All right, so I'll freeze that for now. There's another two minutes, but you guys get the idea, right? It's pretty powerful yeah. stuff that's going on. Um, any questions? So um, I can I just blew up your screen just to see some of the other things, and uh -huh. uh, it seems like it, I mean it seems like it's a cross between PowerPoint and Avid. Are you able to make these? Uh, things move as if it were video or um, is with with jet with like music or um things like this with different elements to make it less point by point if that's even intelligible yeah yeah no no i i totally understand what you're saying it's funny that you say powerpoint too because when i first started using it i think it's more the layout of everything it looks powerpoint-esque right uh, right um there's no motion exactly okay it's, it's limited but what you can do is you can re you can build prototypes so let's say if i'm building an app um and the app is you know has its onboarding has its um i actually have it on here yeah let me go let me skip forward oh sorry to do that i don't mean no to do it's fun it's fun <laughs> no rules <laughs> So let's say an app has an onboarding. This is an example of what you could build in, in Figma. So right, I have these images, I have the login. So this is considered a um, uh, onboarding, right? So an onboarding is when you first join an app. Right. What you do is set up the prototyping to have kind of a video base or interactive. So if I'm pitching it, let's say I'm pitching this idea to mm -hmm. you, right? I'm like, oh, I have this great app design concept. And right. you're an investor or some kind of somebody, whoever it is. I can make this live. So all of these, it's fully interactive within your mobile or, or desktop screen. So I can make the regist register or login live. I can make all these live. So I can actually use it as a prototype before it's actually even created, right? So there's no like development, there's no actual like in-app store, none of that stuff. So right. I'm just sharing it with a client or coworkers to say like, go run through the steps. What are the issues and what are the non-issues of what we're having? What's the okay. user experience? What is, are there any dead ends? Like, do you hit a button and it, you kind of get lost somewhere? Um, do you kind of like log in somewhere, make a user profile and you don't know how to get out? You don't know how to get back? So you can make it fully interactive. Um, so you could do the video part. The problem is, is that there's always a couple um, channels, right? Or paths that you could use or a user could use, right? So I could, I could hit, I mean, especially when it comes to, let's say log in a register, it's two different channels, right? So you're like going into the registration and going to the login. Right. Here's a registration page. Here's the login page. So how does that act as opposed to registration page? And then as you get into the app, you can build these um, thumbnails that kind of show a horizontal scroll, right? So you can show like how your thumb would kind of go left to right. Mm -hmm. style. And then also vertical, right? So you're seeing kind of all the imagery here. And then you right. can also see, see more. Now you have a bunch of other bottom navigation buttons what happens when I hit plus versus search versus home versus chat versus my username? Okay. What does that drive to, right? Right. So, um, and then when you get to that result, where is it going? When I click one of these images, what happens? Does it go large? Now I see the dog, right? I'm clicking, is there a dead end? No, I have the X mark. But these are all things that happen that someone's like, oh, I didn't think about it because I haven't played around in real time with the app, right? Well, so you right. get it's like a zone of building something. It's like anything else. If you're like writing a paper or doing your resume, you miss a period. And you're like, right. 
and you're like, oh, shit, I didn't even notice that. You know, it's those little things, but they all add up. Right. Um, again, here's a search, right? So now you're in search, searching for images. What are the results? Um, here's someone's user profile, right? So now I'm in Jane's user profile. What does that look like versus the chats? What does the chat look like? So you have all these channels and ways that you all want to lay out. And then you could show X, Y, Z person, play with this, have fun, play with it for like an hour, dive deep, see where it goes, see where it doesn't go. Cool. Um, yeah, it is very cool. It's actually very awesome. Um, where was I? <laughs> What's that prototyping? Um, okay, so companies that use Figma, Twitter, Rukitin, Dropbox, Slack, Volvo, Google, Dribble, Zoom, Airbnb, Uber. I mean, you guys see a Lincoln, Ford, Shopify. I mean, there's like endless big companies that use Figma for so many different reasons. Um, I mean, the list goes on. If you Google the list, it's like never ending and they use it for so many different aspects. They might use it for the entire app. Um, Volvo, I would imagine, is using it probably for uh, when I worked at Lincoln, Volvo was one of our main competitors because Volvo actually like really got into the market heavy. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with Volvo. They kind of like disappeared for a while and then came back and now they're like a powerful automotive um, in, the, in the game. And their website was beautiful at the time and they did a whole redesign. And a lot of these automo automotive companies have apps. Ours was called My Lincoln Auto. Um, Volvo has one as well. So if you're a user, I mean, I'm sorry, if, you're, if you purchased, a, let's say, a Volvo vehicle or a Lincoln vehicle or a Ford vehicle, you would have an app which would, you know, say where I can check in, where's like a um, windshield wipers change, oil change, all that kind of stuff, just keeping you up to date, keeping you up to date with vehicles, if there's any recalls, you know, just kind of a what you would expect a, mo a mobile auto app would do. Um, so yes, as I was talking about Figma and Adobe and the competition, they, Adobe acquired Figma in September 2022, which was a huge deal. Um, a billion is a huge deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a massive deal. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was pretty shocking, and it was a huge deal, and it just kind of confirms um, how powerful the tool is, right? Because like Adobe's one of their main is their main competitor, and at a time wasn't a competitor, and now you have the biggest kind of like design platform, which is Adobe, acquire them. Um, I think at first a lot of designers were scared because they were like, are they going to mess it up? Are they going to try to control it or they're going to try to kill the competition. You don't know what's going to happen when someone acquires, right? Um, but they've kept it the same, letting it function. They let it kind of do its own thing and updates and they weren't trying to kill the competition. They were just trying to really take the technology and just make it better, which is awesome. Um, not paying those Adobe fees. Yeah, yes, exactly. Not paying those Adobe fees no longer like rip adobe and get fake versions anymore with they're also cloud-based uh prototyping again i just showed you guys this so i mean you guys see the capabilities here you can move anything around uh, right. again i, I mentioned e-commerce this was actually a client of mine that i worked on that i built um so here's like the mobile app so this is a vertical scroll right so you guys see you know how everyone's been on e-commerce mobile site. Everyone knows how like vertical scrolls work, right? You just, you're on the home page. Now you're on a uh, product listing page. It's called PLPs, um, color choosing, size selector. You can build all of this in Figma. Um, again, here's another example of a home page shop to look. Um, again, here's like, I mean, you can move all this stuff, play with all this stuff. This is a vertical, a horizontal scroll. Just scrolling this way. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, let's just say, I, I understand the storyboarding part of it, um, mm -hmm. which is your your GIFs there, or GIFs right there. Yep. 
And say you use your storyboarding, you got a website put together, you have a URL, but what if that URL is supposed to just be temporary? Does Figma have anything to do with launching or unlaunching, if you will, or taking down websites that were used to build it? Hmm. Um trying to understand the question well well if you have like let's just say there's a one day event and people want to have a one it's just a one day event they just want something for one day and after that it's over um mm -hmm. and then the website is no longer valid um because you're using as i understand you're using figma to help you build a visual visuals for a website or is it for anything mobile it could be mobile app website it's usually, I think I know where you're going. It, you wouldn't use this tool to build something for like a one day pop up kind of site. Right. Um, that would be more like a Canva situation or a Squarespace, even, or maybe a Shopify if, it, if it's a shoppable site. Um, or if it's like a placeholder homepage, you would even now GoDaddy actually has, if you buy the URL via GoDaddy, you could design in GoDaddy. They have actually have like their like simplified versions. Okay. This is more if you're getting into the nitty gritty of like really building something out that's powerful. I see we're losing time. Shree, do we get kicked off? I hope we don't. What no, happens? no, we, uh, we don't get kicked off. I was just trying to, first of all, while we we're doing this, I was trying a timer app. There's now Zoom as a timer app. Oh, right? oh, okay, okay. I've been mean, like very. I also want to tell you that uh, uh, we we do want to wrap up close to one o'clock as possible. I mean, two o'clock as possible. But yeah. uh, Liam will stay on for extra deep questions. Yeah, so, no problem. No problem. Let's get, let's get some more questions in. I think people are seeing the value of this. I saw Marilyn say, "Great, look, this looks like a great product." And what is the most common use of Figma for small entrepreneurs? Asks Rose. Uh, wow, that's, a good, that's another great question. Um, for entrepreneurs, I think it would be a really powerful tool for an entrepreneur if you had even a little bit of understanding. So uh, Rose, let's say, give me an idea of what entrepreneurially you're trying to build. No, your social media manager. Your your social media. Okay, coach. social media manager. Okay, for managing wise for social media, you could mock up boards and have a schedule like you saw on that whiteboard of what you would build. Like, let's say you're like, okay, I want to drop this image this day, this layout. You could design out. You let's say it's an Instagram. You could make the canvas 1080 by 1080, right pixels. Do a layout, and then you can market Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, but in regards to like learning the actual physical program, um, that might be a little too in depth, right? If you're an entrepreneur, because you've got a million other things going on starting a business. I think it would be great if you had some type of background like we're doing here, where you had some type of background to understand and learn the capabilities. That way you would have a better understanding. When you do have that better understanding, you would know what to say to a designer and be like, hey, I want X, Y, Z. You know how to speak the language a little better. If you know how to speak the language a little better, you can conceptualize and verbalize your, your, your words to what you want accomplished. Does that make sense? Yeah. Great. Um, any more questions? People have to have questions. Um, Marilyn wanted to see the jet, the dashboard, um, the dashboard. Yeah. And she also asked, does Figma have AR integration? AR, um, no, they don't actually. That's a good, I'm sure they're working on it. <laughs> I'm sure they're working on it right now. I don't, I don't, I don't put it past them, but not that I'm aware of, but it could be in a, I'm sure, I'm sure it's happening, especially with the funding of Adobe now and selling for 20 million. Billion. 20 million. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they have some money. They well, yeah, that was, money. that was Canva's, that was, sorry to interrupt. That was, that was Canva's huge uh, thing this year. They had a big conference in Australia 
and okay. build six to seven new uses that are on their main menu of being able to use AI and integrate it with Canva and, uh, you know, come up with anything. I mean, from photos, images, uh, other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would assume that Figma is going to have this next, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. They're going to have that. And um, even Shopify is coming out with a huge AI piece, right? And this this site, like this menu, let's say everything, this would go on Shopify Plus. If you guys are familiar with Shopify Plus, this was going to be implemented in Shopify Plus. Shopify Plus is getting a huge AI aspect as well that they just released. Um, Marilyn, question. Yeah, she has another one. Does it remove layers? Like, do you have, is there any layering here? Oh yeah, 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 there's, see all here? Hold on, this is the file. These are all the layers. So you can name the layers, move the layers around. You can basically do whatever you want. Delete. Uh, it, it's all layered based. Um, and that's designer speak, man. The commoners yeah. don't like layers, but the uh, designers love layers. Yes. And what's great is like, yes, thank you for that. We do love layers. <laughs> In regards to that, you can create this icon. See here, it says 12 by 11.88. That's right. that's the size that an engineer would need to know a, or like a backend um, coder would need to know to implement it, to make it live, to put it in there. So as I was saying before, like Photoshop, you would you used to have to slice it and make it that exact size. And the engineer would be like, can you make this 12 by 12? And you would have to go through piece by piece where if you make this an icon, this is a feature here where you can right click and make it into an icon. Now the engineer knows that that's gonna be a live piece. By an icon, it's still text, a drop down. So you could drop that down um, as all of these are and kind of like, they know that it's gonna be active. So, you know, everyone's been on a multiple shop inside totally. of clips, right? Like, and kind of goes like points down and it drops the folders. Hey, so Liam? Yes, it's endless layers, yes. I have a question for you. So what is, um, as many of us were, uh, a lot of us are incredibly dependent and, and you know, thankful for YouTube videos on a lot of this stuff. How is their YouTube uh, archive in terms of like tutorials and other things on this stuff? It is endless. Okay. Endless. I mean, like between, it would be, it, it's the same for you with uh, like, you use Photoshop a lot? I, I use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or any Adobe program or really anything in the world now. Like you can YouTube things forever. It, it's like, it's massive, massive information. Okay. Okay, yeah. Good. yeah. Between, I mean, like there's Figma actually has a channel and there's like endless. Right. Designers. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, there's endless developers that have it. Can clients make suggestions through the app? And uh, the, Dana wants to know, do you ever use plugins or widget features? Uh, it looks like you can add AI plugins. You can. Is it, All the AI plugins is, is, is a new thing. Um, I, I haven't really like played with it yet because it's so new. Um, right. And what was the other question? Uh, Marilyn wanted to know, can clients make suggestions through the app or do they oh, have right. to? Okay. They can, um, you can give them access. Um, like if you share, right. Like almost like in Google drive, right. If you, I'm sorry, Google drive, Google slides, like you can share and say like, um, can view versus can edit. If you have can edit, the only problem is if you give it to a client, it can be scary because they can like delete, let's say like, this entire thing and you're like what happened to i don't know um so i can run into issues um if you do can view uh the best i would say the best thing that you could do um with giving to a client is you could really comment hey this is great and then this one you could say you know hey this sucks and send that back to the developer yeah. And this is just, it's it, it's live on this board. It's shared with whoever's on there. The client can, on you. They, can they have that capability. On you. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
so yeah, there's a, there's a comment thing like you went on Google Docs or Google Google Slides, sorry, because um, I know everyone here is probably using Google Slides at some point or another. Um, what about, hey Liam, what about a uh, video uh, in terms of like importing video and other things or uh, all uses of that? I'm sure, right? There is uses of that, yes. A lot of times what you would do is you would put a placeholder because it just takes a lot of room and everything's vector-based on, okay. um, on here. So you could just put like, you know, the play icon and just have have like the little, you know, play piece. And then when you would upload it to, I just, I keep using Shopify because this was an e-commerce example. You would You would upload like, you know, the play icon. You would upload the video. So usually in Figma, you would just, you would keep it play and like a still or a screenshot of the video. And then everyone would know that that's where the video is going on the mobile or, or web platform. Okay. So you're saying that you can design for both the, the website as well as an, a mobile app. Yeah. So this is okay. mobile, these designs. Uh -huh. And did I put in web? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Hmm. Yes, but you can. Sorry, I didn't okay. add examples here, but yes, you 100% can do that. Uh, and can you save like a version, like before you send it off to, you know, or can you save a version and then send that off or? This is the desktop version. Okay. Yeah, right. So you can and say like you say like you find that and somebody makes a change that you then turn around and don't want. Um, is there some way to just bounce back to an automatically saved version or do you have to start the work all over again? Uh, that's a great question. Normally, if someone would have, like usually the designers are the only ones who have like the editing capability. Hopefully a designer wouldn't delete anything. Um, or they, a lot of times you would stress the idea of, hey, if you have this concept, um, let's say it's here. Like I have this concept of, um, this guy make a new, make a new one, put uh -huh. it in here and make it like, oh, I want it to be two boxes or this one to be long. Uh -huh. Don't do it in the master file, right? Usually you would have a master file and then you would have other files that are runoffs of like, so you're not touching, like you would have different rounds, right? As you would any making anything you wouldn't like touch the actual master go ahead Shri. i just want to say where uh some people will start to leave so far first anyone before they're leaving please leave a comment or a thank you for liam if you have a question please leave a question for Liam as well and he will answer it if you yeah. um i know the questions that have come in as well bob had an observation here and some other things um uh yois you were doing such a good job of managing the back and forth would you take over uh, sure. Uh, in terms of, let's see what's here still. Um, if I can get my chat open. Okay. Uh, no, just in the chat to say thanks to Liam. Oh, all oh, right. Thank you so much for, for this, uh, presentation, Liam. Um, oh. I was for you on Twitter, but I don't know if you have a space there, but this has been absolutely fantastic. It looks like it takes Adobe up a level. Um, but it does seem like it has its functionality, you know, certain functionalities such as adding video as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, I, I guess one question that I did have, but I didn't ask earlier was uh, this, I think you already answered it, that it works on different layers, which could be considered different tracks, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. This was awesome. Thank you so much. I'm glad you had the time to meet with us. And I'm really glad that I took the time to listen and to see what was going on. It sounds fantastic. Uh, right back at you. Much appreciated. I appreciate everyone coming here. Um, I hope it was super helpful. It was good to meet everybody. The questions were great. Um, cause I feel like I can see it in. And it's just like, um, I feel like the knowledge is growing when people are asking. I, I, I want to know what the piece of art is behind you. I'm fascinated with it. Oh, I did that. <laughs> Before you did that, that? One nice. Second. One second. Can you stop artist sharing? as well. One second. Can you stop sharing your screen? Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, just wanted to make sure we answer uh, Bob's question about the, about the, he had a question about the uh, cloud. The yeah, since this is all in the cloud, I assume that my PC doesn't need a powerful processor or graphics chip. Is that correct? Yeah, I was just reading that. Since this is all, 
in the cloud. I assume that might be easier. I, Bob, honestly, I'm never on PC. That question I cannot answer. I would like to know the answer. So if you try to download it, let me know what happens. Because <laughs> no, 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 right? it's all in the cloud, so there's no actual download. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it doesn't require that kind of muscle, right, right. since it's in the cloud. But OK, there's, thank you. There's two aspects to it, OK? So there is a downloaded version that you could have on your desktop. It's not on your desktop. It's still cloud-based. So it's not saving anything, but the app lives on your machine itself. But all the work is cloud-based. Then there's also, you can use it web browser based. So you can have it on your Safari or on your Google Chrome and not download it and just use it via your web browser. And okay. you're, it's the same thing. It's just basically, you just don't have it. Like you got to log in through your web browser, which as a, if you're using it every day, it's not the most efficient way to use the product. Um, awesome. I'm, I'm trying to catch up on these questions. I'm sorry, guys. Is there anything else that I missed? Um, Not as far as I can tell. I just installed the iPad apps. I'm excited to dive in there on my Mac. Awesome, Steve. Cool. Great. Um, well, I have another question, but we are wrapping up here. I'll, I'll email you. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, everyone, please connect with Liam, but just, just in, in, in very quickly, are there... Um, uh, things that you are doing that would be interesting for people to look at? Like if you have a campaign or something you've done, you can just toss it to me and I'll say share it with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, I share right now, whenever you get a chance. Sure. And then can you remind people where the art thing is tonight? Yes, it's at the top of the chat, but I'll recopy and paste. Some people will have missed it, so. Ah, uh, there you go. And any, uh, anybody else have an idea for a future session? Please let us know. And again, we're just really grateful to Liam. He'll stick around, I think, for a few more minutes if someone has a specific question, just ask him. I just okay. shared my LinkedIn for everyone. What about um, your Instagram? Are you on Instagram? Yes, sir, I am. Here's my portfolio. Um, here's my art site. And I'd like to see if Ryan wants to give you a public review of how you did. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, let's hear it. The little sister, let's see. Yeah. This is your chance. <laughs> Considering um, I helped with a run through yesterday, I would say that this was a much improved version. <laughs> she did. She did. She did. <laughs> but no, you did a great job. You did a great job. Thank you, Rai Rai. <laughs> You're welcome. Proud of you. <laughs> Family Aww. bonding. <laughs> she did help me because at first we did a Google Meets. And then she's like, I don't think this is on Google. This is on Zoom. I'm like, well, the interaction is completely different because you can't share audio on Google. I'm like, and she caught that. And that was great. <laughs> <laughs> we did troubleshooting. We did troubleshooting. Yeah, we did troubleshooting. <laughs> exactly. We did. It was so awesome. I'm Liam, I'm going to try to stop by. I don't, I don't know if I will, but I'm, I will be able to. But I'm going to try to try to stop by. Trish, and you do please text me because I don't know how it's going to be. Um, right. if anyone, please like email me because I don't know how it's going to be. It's like I'm doing this last minute. It's someone else's show along with like five other artists. The space looks beautiful. It's outside at like a penthouse, the outdoor space. Um, there's definitely going to be art there. There's definitely going to be like um, cocktails and art viewing, and it's a beautiful space. Other than that, I don't have details. So, Lena, uh, are you in the city? Alina is, I know, I don't think Linda I, I may is. Be in the city. I may be coming in tomorrow for a show. So um, maybe I could stop. This is only but... tonight, right? This is a one time. Oh, thing? tonight. This is tonight. Okay. Yes, it's just tomorrow. tonight. Yes. Okay. I wish you tomorrow. Um, I'm do, you also have, having... do you have your email here, Liam? I don't know. I know I, will, I, see I will put it in. I put all my okay. other stuff on my email. like a... And do you have Instagram? I do. I will share that as well. And then uh, anybody who's like a burning question, please do ask it so that he can answer and then we can let him go. Yeah, no, Ron, I, Liam C. I, Tracy. Liam, what is the C? Charlie? And uh, it's my middle name, which is Clerkin, which is an Irish surname. That, nice. Yes. Um, yes, and I'm having a show in August. And, uh, <laughs> she's asking, Ma's asking when the August one is and that we haven't uh, decided that yet. So watch for it. Oh, no. 
Wait, I think oh, I was talking oh. about the August um, art show that you're also having well, in case anyone show. can't sorry, make it sorry, tonight. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I was asking about. All right, thank you. Sorry, sorry Tree. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Saturday, August 12th, it's in Rockaway. What I can do is everyone's email. I have a flyer. I can share the flyer of it. Um, it's going to be a solo show for myself. Uh, it's at Rockaway Beach Surf Club. It's a Saturday. Um, I don't know if anyone goes to Rockaway or familiar with Rockaway. Somebody on in our circle is very much connected there. Uh, her name Aaron is Siaminski. Amy McLaughlin is lives there yeah. now. She moved from Manhattan there. So yeah. she, we tell her she'll get everybody out. Oh, yes, I would she will. Love that. What is she your will. name? Her name is Tammy. Tammy. You, you, you will email us and we'll send it to you. Yeah. Where, oh, where in the Rockaway Surf Club or the Breezy Point Surf Club? Rockaway Surf Club on 87th okay. Street. 87th Street. Okay. Yep. Um, great. Uh, guys, thank you for everything. I will share all my credentials also via email. You will have everything. Um, really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great Thank presentation. You. Really appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Okay. Well. Shoot me. Don't be afraid to shoot me emails with questions. And if you have any, come across any cool tutorials. I'm always watching tutorials as well. And um, I hope we can do this again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. Thanks, Liam. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Steve, you have a second? Marilyn, have you met Steve? Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for coming by. I know you go to a yes. lot of things. I wanted to just to get your feedback. And are you any plans to come to New York? Um, not not any specific ones, but I'm I'm pretty flexible now. I'm pretty flexible. Um, unfortunately, the the parks parks and rec heroes fund my main my main client is not doing well financially. So I'm still working there. I love it. Um, it's just the hours have been cut back a bit. So I'm more flexible now. Are, are you looking for Are you looking for um, social media media gigs, manager gigs? Yeah, I definitely am. Yeah, I'm. I'm doing. I, I have just, drop a, note a to, couple really small drop, clients. So, if you'll drop a note to Rajni, yeah, uh, in our you know uh, Steve plus DGM. Oh, right, right on on WhatsApp there. Right, tell, just tell her I know you're. You know, just so you know, I'm available. So she can talk to you about because she knows about your live streaming, but she may not know about your social media work. So say, uh, sure. we're 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 about to reach out to get more people. So I'd rather work with you. So and yeah, let okay. let Neil also know that you have availability. I will absolutely do that. We will uh, uh, try to bring you in. We have some new projects coming up and new opportunities. Oh, yeah, I had I had a, a rough year there for a bit. I had to work through some some personal things, but I'm back on track and just doing great Personally now. Makes you need it. I, no, no, but I, but, I always like, but I want to be open about things too, you know. I understand, Absolutely. but I'm just saying I've been I've been there, so I know I know what sure. it's like. Well, yeah, great, great to be back. With. Okay, good. So you'll you'll talk to Neil and you'll talk to uh, Rajni, okay? Rajni, Neil one on one and Rajni in that group. Absolutely, perfect. All right, and, uh, and and then I don't know if you know this. I'm I'm trying to do these AI workshops. If right. you can think of a venue. And where we could do it in Philly, I'll come down and we'll do it. We can um, we can do it either as a fundraiser or a money making thing um, or something else. And so just think about that. I haven't been to Philly. About that. Yeah, I've been I've been dipping into AI too, and I've just not not play, playing with ChatGPT. It's, it's kind of scary. I when one of my clients, I'm basically they're doing video blogs, and I'm just doing you know summary quick write ups. Um, like you know, there and uh, out of curiosity, so I ordered the uh, the, the the video. And then I just had asked ChatGPT to write a short article. Now, by no means was it as good as what I wrote, but it's much better than a, than a non-professional writer would have written. And that was that's it's it's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Scary, but also if I think it's that you know it's a it's a good tool. The one ad that keeps on popping up in my, my Instagram uh, stories is that. You know, your job won't be taken by by AI. It'll be taken by someone who knows AI, which is a, a very nice little. It's a good. It, it gets your attention. Yep, for sure. For cool, sure. Man. Anything else for now? Um, not at the moment, but it is uh, great to see you, and great to see everyone else as well. Been here. All right, my friend, hang in there, and uh, we'll we'll help you. Okay. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thank Bye. Yep.
That was fast. Hey. How are you? It's like you sent up the bat signal. I got to respond. What's up? <laughs> um, we just started. Oh, yeah, I thought you left. One, sorry, one second. Give me a second. I thought you left. I looked for you. I thought you gone. <laughs> Even the site Zoom now has some things which are pretty cool uh, for interactions and breakout rooms and making them making them better. So that's that's one thing. We have um, uh, spatial chat as a tool, and also use uh, we use it in conjunction with Streamyard. So we're looking into experimenting with Sorry, one second. Sorry, one second. Next time. No more. Next time, next week over here. Oh, next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So it's extra. So you at least have this extra fifty. Right? No, I said last time. You mean last? Last time or this time? No, last time. Era two times. Last time, So I, we did not pay you for last time. No. Oh. Okay. No. 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 Next. Next. Week. next okay. So I owe you okay. one. I will I'm sorry, I forgot to give you off. Maybe go with my next week. I think I have it up on your phone or go off. Okay, don't worry. Please Just tell her to tell me. Three o'clock. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, tell her to tell me. Okay. Just to take the minute that you okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'm you. Sorry. No, 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 don't worry. It's all good. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm now free. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you said, you said stream yard and what? what was the other tool? A spatial chat. Spatial chat? Yeah, it, it has a cocktail party like setting that you can use and it works. It's 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 really, really cool. You can just spend time on it and and they'll they'll show you. You can have people move around and network and chat online. And what do you what do you guys mean by way of services at this point? Around this kind of online are you gonna not doing that? Anymore? No, so no, no. So what's happened now is so we went from 80% of our business being live streaming events to what I thought would be zero percent after the pandemic, but now it's still 20% because a lot of businesses, not they, they can get higher quality speakers if they offer hybrid and uh, and also better attendees or long, you know, more distant attendees can attend. So, um, so we've had a conference that went three years virtual. One year they said, we don't need you. We're doing a ballroom in um, Iowa or whatever. And now this year they come back to say, we're gonna do hybrid in 24. So, so that's, those are the kinds of things we're doing now. Um, uh, and when we do StreamYard, like it's, you know, as I think I've shown you, we do it like television style so that it's much more engaging. The speakers are, the pop much more on screen. And then we use these other tools like spatial chat to make it more, make people feel more connected before, during, or after. Okay. And then the biggest tool that's out there, of course, is Whova, um, W-H-O-V-A, which has a lot of in, in networking tools and things built in. Just writing things down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll take a look at the stuff because we, we like I said, we're just early stages of talking about it, trying to figure out if it's a piece week. What we did was we took our user conference, which had been in September, and we moved it to April of next year. Mm -hmm. And that leaves us not a gap, but certainly an opportunity to do something else. And you know, we're trying to I'm I'm trying to level up some of the stuff we're doing in terms of um everything's about leads and lead generation, but it's it's so deep down in the weeds. I'm like, we need something big that's gonna attract a lot of eyeballs that's you know really gonna try to elevate the discussion. And I think that's an online event. Uh, but we'll see what, we'll, we'll run out of the flagpole soon. Um, what did Krishna end up doing for the summer? 
uh, he's in India uh, working at uh, a factory so he could be near his grandparents. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I mean, I just said in the internship here, I don't know kind of what happened to that. I'm just told things happen and I don't have any control. No, no, of course. No, so, oh, you did refer him to that? Oh, thank you. I, uh, I don't know yeah. what happened to the interview. Do you know? I have no idea. I saw his resume go through and then I saw it not go through and I didn't know where it was. Okay, well, but thank you for trying. I appreciate that. I, yeah, thank you. Sure. Anytime. Okay. Um, he's, but he's back, he's back in the fall, right? Yeah, yeah, he'll be back in okay. I'll be in San Diego. Thank he'll you. Oh, wait, <laughs> what do you mean? All of, all of the fall? Um, from September through uh, late November. What? Yeah. Tell me more. That's crazy. Um, basically, because you know, Shoshi had such a, a rough time last year mm -hmm. uh, before and ended up not going. You know, in order to kind of give her a little bit of training wheels, um, I'm there as a backup. Like if she needs anything, I'm there, and then I'll come back and be done. But I'm going to work remotely for a couple of months from San Diego, and it'll just you know give her a chance to just settle in and i'm supposed to be far enough away from her she doesn't have to call me but you know the problem with being in california and us being in the east coast was and i had this with my boys if anything happened yeah i know i know exactly what that yeah so you know when ben was having a downtime, i was able to get to get to dc pretty easily yeah um but alex needed you know i can i would talk to alex on the phone one day and i could just hear him needing you know somebody to come and take him to lunch yeah. I, I can't do that in California. So that's what I'm there for, is that kind of stuff. Um, and then once I hit November, she should be okay. And if she's not, we'll, we'll reassess that. And so how will you, where would you stay? You can get an Airbnb for two months like that? Yeah, I got an Airbnb all set in uh, North Park. Is it is it super expensive? Um, not super expensive, but I probably should spend more than I did. Right. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not cheap. Um, but it's better than the alternative. Sure. So yeah. it was like, let's just do it. was one of those things where we didn't really think a lot about the money. We thought about kind of what do we really need to accomplish. Um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not renting a car the whole time. I'll be, you know, kind of riding around and taking public transportation on my, on my bike. And then, and, um, you know, just kind of live on my own for a while. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's really cool. And then, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's really nice. Uh, can you write off some of the rent as business expense or something, or not business, but like tax to, tax expense? I have no idea. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. I think it's because you don't use a you don't use a lot of um, because you're now full time employee. You don't have a lot of income that's not in, not income income, right? So it's different. Yeah. 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 Because I did have that. My wife, my wife has our own business, so anything we need to, we, we send through that. Um, but this, that, this really doesn't have to qualify. Uh, I guess I could make a case if I did some work out there. But I mean, I'm, I'm working from I'm working for here, out there. I'm just going to be removed. Um, it's fine. That works. Right. Okay. Anyway, so when, when do you bring them up there? Um, I I don't know yet, but I'll I'll, I'll let you know, and then I'll might see you in San Diego. I have uh, some. My cousin there, so who's, who's been bothering me to come see her, so I might come up there. I'll see that. Yeah. All right. Thanks for you. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.